Israel continues its offensive targeting of Gaza in retaliation of the barrage of rockets fired into Israel by Hamas. On Saturday, airstrikes hit a mosque in Gaza that the Israeli military claims was used to store Iranian rockets by the Palestinian terror organization. Israel remains resolute. Its defense minister said that his country should be prepared for several more days of fighting, saying they will continue to punish Hamas until security returns to Israel. The most recent outbreak in violence came after three Israeli teenagers were kidnapped and killed. That was followed by the killing of a Palestinian teen as revenge. Well, I spoke to Israel's Minister of Economy and a member of the Security Cabinet, Naftali Bennett, earlier. Mr. Minister, there have been barrages of rocket fire coming from Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Tell me about the mood of the Israelis, because a lot of these rockets are going places that those rockets have never gone before, far more uh, into the northern territory of Israel. What is the spirit and mood of the Israeli people right now? Israel is strong. The Israeli people are very strong. But, you know, I, I want to show you something. Uh, this is a grad rocket. This is the tail of a grad rocket, one of hundreds that was uh, shot by Hamas terror group in Gaza onto Israeli cities. We've had hundreds of them. Now, I'd like every one of your viewers to imagine this missile, this rocket, it's about eight feet long, filled with explosives and shrapnel. And imagine how they'd feel if one of these rockets fell in their neighborhood, in their children's kindergarten, or school, or God forbid, on their own home. That's what Israel is facing today. And we're not seeing the world really act against that. So we understand that we are on our own. And Mike, we will defend ourselves and we will win. You say you will defend yourselves and I have no doubt about that. We've seen the remarkable success rate of the Iron Dome. About 90% of those uh, missiles that were targeted were successfully brought down. But there's still this ongoing problem that you've got with Hamas located in Gaza that seems to be growing stronger as Iran continues to feed them more uh, explosives and weaponry. Will there come a point at which Israel says that's enough and you've got to go into Gaza and put an end to this? Well, it's certainly on the table. Um, I'll remind you, uh, Governor, that uh, about nine years ago, we evacuated the Gaza Strip and handed it over to the Palestinians. Uh, they had promised it would become the Singapore of the Middle East or something of that uh, sort. And instead, from just a few days after we evacuated, evacuated 8,000 Israelis from their homes, Hamas turned the Gaza Strip into a fortress of terror. And they developed these sort, sort of missiles and rockets. They are uh, having tunnels, digging tunnels from Gaza into Israeli towns in order to conduct terror attacks. And that's all they're doing. And, you know, my big lesson is that whenever we, God forbid, hand over our land to the Arabs, it'll turn into a fortress of terror. That's why we should never do that again and never make that mistake again. You know, I know that you and I feel both very strongly, uh, I as an American, you as an Israeli, that the whole notion, some of which has been pushed by my own country, I must concede, is ludicrous. That somehow if you give up territory and let your enemy get closer to you, the closer he gets, the nicer he becomes. And, and I think we know that's naive. And it certainly hasn't been proven. I, I guess the question is, do people in Israel, even those on the left who have supported the notion of giving up land and, and believing that it's all going to turn out for good. Do they now see that this is not going to work? And does this latest intrusion of Hamas bring the country together? Yes, the country is very much united. The country is strong. Thousands of civilians have been recruited to serve in our uh, reserve units. Uh, I myself in previous conflicts uh, did just that. And we're firm, we're strong. You know, Governor, we've been here for 3,800 years, over, well over 2,000 years before Islam came to the world. So we're here to stay. If anyone wants to mess with us, that's okay, but we're here to stay and we'll fight them. I think many in Israel now have awakened. Many are more realistic. We're in a tough region, in a very tough region where you've got Syria killing 
150,000 of its civilians. In uh, Iraq, we have ISIS, a radical Islamic terror group taking over Iraq. Egypt had a revolution and a counter-revolution. The only solid and stable area and a free democracy in this area is Israel. And we're proud about it, and we're going to keep it. Real quickly, I need to ask you about the difference between the way that you're dealing with your retaliation uh, to the rocket fire, the indiscriminate rockets that are coming into Israel. They're, they're, they're just targeting civilians. You specifically target military targets and terrorist cells. Explain the difference between the way you're approaching what you do and what the Palestinians are doing through the auspices of Hamas. Well, it's uh, pretty simple. In Israel, we send soldiers to defend civilians. In Gaza, they send civilians to defend terrorists. What they're doing, they place their rocket launchers within hospitals, within schools, within kindergartens, in order for us then to shoot back and kill their civilians. In effect, Hamas is sacrificing its own children and women on purpose, deliberately, in order to you know, make for a good uh, TV scene. We in Israel, what we do is we target the terrorists only. In fact, sometimes we go to, to such, such a length that we'll call up their homes and tell the civilians to get out before we act. I don't think any army in the world does that. Uh, certainly, I'm, I'm confident that the idea of Israeli Defense Forces is the most moral um, force in the world. And we're fighting in that way, but we are winning. I want to tell you, Hamas has taken quite a hit over the past few days. Uh, Naftali Bennett, I want to say thank you again. I know it's a very busy, stressful, and hectic time for you and all of the ministers in the Israeli cabinet. We're delighted to have you join us. Our prayers are with you, and I will tell you, uh, I will see you soon, perhaps next year in Jerusalem. Thank you, Naftali. Th thank you, Governor, and thank you, America. Up next. The Republican National Committee reaches out to the faith community, and later, he told you so, he predicted Obama would weaken the country, and he did it on this show four years ago. John Voigt joins us again later in the show.